Hey y'all, my name is Taquisha. This is our freedom song. And listen, today we are in the 60s. It jumped from 40 something degrees to 60 something degrees and I am ready to garden y'all. <laughs> I am so happy that you are here. I was gifted a tray of different varieties of onions and I'm gonna plant these today and I am so excited about them because there's so many different varieties that we get to try. I actually already planted onions. I think it was in November, December. And so those onions are planted and I am excited to see what the difference is gonna be from planting months ago versus planting right now. If there's any difference at all, I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. of gnats on whatever kind of mushroom that is right there like they're covering it so this is where I am planning to plant these onions it's on the left side of the greenhouse I'm going to plant onions in here now I already have some bulbs planted in here that I actually forgot I planted in here but I'm glad they popped up so now I know that they're there I am going to use the square foot method with these onions um, and just see how that works I did not use the square foot method for the other onions so I like that we are able to try more than one different way of planting and so I've been on that kick lately, if you saw our last video. Three different methods. I tried the winter sowing, the soil blocking, as well as the seed starting trays. And so I'm just so excited about all of it. And I want to just try it all so I know what works um, for me. And I know what works, like what I'm able to, when I say for me, it's not like because I'm special or not special. I mean like what I am able to do and successfully do. <laughs> what can I accomplish? You know, what can I handle? And so, um, and so I'm so excited about those things. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely do because I think it's so interesting, you know, Know that there's many ways to doing the same thing in this short period of time I have an update on a winter sewing bag that has exploded and I'm so happy about it I can't wait to show you bed is about two feet wide and I know that it's nine feet long and so um, that's gonna help me determine how many onions can go where because nine onions can go in each square foot so the difference between these onions right here and the onions I started back in November December is these are actually onion starts and what I did was planted an onion that looked like a bulb already and so that'll be interesting as well to see the difference oh I am going to label these I don't have the best luck with labels <laughs> I'm actually going to put them, I'm going to plant them in alphabetical order because that helps me. So this is Southern Bell, Texas, super sweet, yellow granix, um, early white, Texas legend, and white Bermuda. And so we know B comes first, so we're going to, we're going to start with these. Man, that mushroom that I showed y'all, that thing stinks, like... It's one of those stinky mushrooms. <laughs> okay, so with these onions, I'm only planting it about that deep. So pretty much deep enough for it to kind of stand on its own.
So I'm also going to be trying out these asparagus. I have, this is the Jersey Giant and this one is the Mary Washington. And I'm just going to add it to the asparagus that I already have. Never seen asparagus roots. This is what it looks like. This is obviously all dry and crispy, but this is what it looks like. And so I just have to show you guys how incredibly well some of these herbs and flowers are already doing. It's crazy. So first of all, let's talk about this chamomile, y'all, because this chamomile has exploded inside of this bag. You'll have to see this. Look, look at all of that chamomile in there, are just all squeezed up together. That is amazing. So, I could have probably did a better job with sprinkling it out on the top. But I don't really know if it matters. And they aren't, their roots aren't super sensitive. So I'm going to be able to separate these. You have experience with chamomile? Definitely let me know. But from what I read, um, I want it to be about two inches before I se um, separate them. So... I'm just so excited to see how many seeds germinated. Incredibly well is these bachelor buttons. And these are the blue ones. And the seeds done fell all down, down there, but they have grown. <laughs> they are growing. I am so happy about these because I planted them last year and the year before and did not grow they did not grow and so I am so happy to see these little baby blue bachelor buttons that is excitement right there saw some sprouts in this sweet Williams which is a gorgeous flower if you have not seen these these are so beautiful so I'm so happy to see them growing okay so I'm happy to say that these are staying together so far so good as far as our soil blocks so that is a good sign and I've not watered them I've just left them and they are staying put they feel very moist still um, and it's been several days and so I'm just gonna keep an eye on that because in the greenhouse already have aphids do you see that that's so crazy it's like where those aphids even come from I do have some peppers that are under the light inside um, of the house. And so I'm hoping that these grow well. So at the bottom first oh, okay. and then just you know, squish, squish it, it in. Yeah, exactly. Let's make an indention and squish it in. And then cover it the yeah. sides. have different types though that's that's next level right there <laughs> <laughs> and apparently there's some that which i didn't know um until i watched this video where someone was like i only plant determinate sweet potatoes girl who even knew that what? you know because you know how like potato but like tomatoes is determinate indeterminate yes and then i found out that potatoes is determinate in 10 minutes sometimes when people are like oh heal your potatoes heal your potatoes it's because it, they talk about the variety because not every potato needs to be healed up oh but what is those what's those common potatoes that we use that we get at the store um, like you can go russet potatoes russet potatoes are indeterminate which means if you heal them up they will keep growing at the like like a tomato like they'll grow roots but potatoes if you keep piling up the soil keep on the soil what? she was like but we grow determinate sweet potatoes she was like because it means that when you plant the the slip uh -huh. although it's gonna sprawl out and everything it's not gonna sprawl out and because if it touches the ground or soil or anywhere it touches it can produce new potatoes there Yes. And um, and, and then you so you have like these little baby sweet potato, you know, um, roots that's trying to grow into a big root everywhere, mm -hmm. and it's taken away from the main section where you plant oh. it. So she was saying she only plants Covington, 
which is just like a regular orange sweet potato because she said it's determinate because that's what happened to me um my sweet potatoes the first year i planted them they vined everywhere like and then i had the wooden pathways yeah and they vined all into the wooden pathways and was attaching into the wood wood and i literally grew sweet potatoes in the wood chips what? like when i was pulling up some of the and they were like good sizes like they so they were like good size <laughs> like, i pulled it up and it was like connecting and going all into the wooden pathways and some of the roots that i pulled up literally had a decent sized sweet potato and it was growing wow. in completely wood chips that's crazy it was i found sweet potatoes in bed that i didn't even plant the sweet potatoes Whoa. because of the vines had went that way and like creeped underneath the wooden size raised bed mm -hmm. and started growing <laughs> And so I didn't That's like that. Wild. And so when she said that, I was like, oh my goodness, I learned something new. So yeah. if you plant a determinate one, it won't have vines? It will, yes, it will have vines, but she said they're not as long as indeterminate. Okay. And when they touch the ground, they're not trying to touch the ground and, and grow a new like runner like okay. how strawberry well, sometimes strawberries has runners yeah. and they'll go in like a new plant like it's not trying to go attach and do new sweet potato <laughs> like, everywhere it touches wow because it seems like that would be the most beneficial thing like if you wanted more and more sweet potatoes but i guess like how you were saying like that she was saying not if it's taking its energy from right, from the main crop and then she was like then too if you miss any she was like one in her experience she find that they all super slim when they don't like go attach somewhere else because oh. first of all it took their time to get there and she's growing in ohio which has a slow growing season mm -hmm. and so if it took their time to get there now they have to get there and then establish themselves and yeah you know so she was like in her opinion in her you know experience they were always just like really tiny sweet potatoes and then with her having basically to dig everywhere the sweet potato had touched Man. instead of just having to know where to dig you, know, <laughs> spot, yeah. you have to go dig at the hole you know that's crazy yeah so when she was saying it, i was like oh those are some good points you know yeah and it sounds like a sucker mm -hmm. like a sucker taken away from yes. the main thing you know yeah so I mean, for her, I was like, that that makes sense because you're in Ohio, you got a short growing season. You're like, no, I just wanted to grow in this section. You I can know, know all my sweet potatoes is that. Right, I want to know where <laughs> everything's at. That's like you know, planting a potato, and then you have to go, you know, two feet down. Yeah, and especially if you got other stuff that's growing around. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's taking over. We eating us some sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh and they make it better. <laughs> like, I am the shakiest person. <laughs> Hey you guys, so it's the next day and it's amazing how much growth can take place in just one day. It's so crazy. So it's a little bit loud in here because I have a fan going as well as our... So grateful for this ventilation in here. So I turned that on. I haven't had to use it because it's been really cold, but today, as you can see, I don't know if you could see that, but inside the greenhouse, it's 81 degrees. Like that's a huge jump. So I turned that on as well as the fan. I got the fan blowing directly at all of these little starts. All of the purple uh, broccoli as well as the other broccoli. What is it? The Romanesco that I was kind of worried about the other day. All of it sprouted. Like not only sprouted, but like sprouted. So this is the purple broccoli and back here is the Romanesco. So I am so happy about that. And this in the front is our broccoli rob. And all of that brown sprinkle that you see is some cinnamon that I actually sprinkled on there on the soil. Um, I heard that that helps with the fungus gnats. And so I just wanted to spray that on there because there was fungus gnats everywhere. I sprinkled it on the amaranth as well as all these little baby starts that we have over here. Um, this cabbage was just like suffering so bad with gnats and aphids i was just like wow <laughs> so hopefully the cinnamon really helps that out um, i wanted to make sure that we were going to have some healthy plants so i opened up all of our winter sewing bags as well because i just want to make sure that they're getting air 
but like these hollyhocks are beautiful. I can't even believe how incredibly big all of these things got in one day. Some of these wasn't even sprouted yesterday and then you just boop, just like that, you come out and they're there. Some flowers that I started, I wasn't expecting them to pop up so quickly, but I'm excited about it. I just showed y'all this like a day or two ago, but oh my goodness, these bachelor buttons have grown up. They have grown tremendously. So I have a ton of stuff to do. Um, I'm going to be planting some of this lemon mint in individual pots um, from what we've grown last year. And I received happy mail a little while back and I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited because I don't have these seeds. And a happy gardening friend sent me these one of her combs with all the seeds in it and I'm so excited about it oh my goodness because this is such a beautiful flower so I'm going to be planting some of these today as well also going to be playing around with another method for seeds organization because I've been keeping them in these photo containers and I do think it's great I think it's wonderful I'm such a visual person that I'm going to try to see how I like this method better. If I put them in these laminated, look, and I could just see all of it and maybe just have different sections like saying like flowers and tomatoes and peppers and then I could just look on there just to see like what I have. I already like the way that this looks because it's a book and I get to open up and just to see all put all of the different varieties like in a different section I'm really thinking that I'm gonna like this totally good for storage and it's nice and it's neat this is good for visuals like just to not have to pull all the seeds out to see what I have so this is what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to see how many I can get to fit inside of this binder and then just go from there. But so far, so good. I just put a few in there so I could just see like what I was feeling, but I really like it. Up our seeds from our Cleomes from last spring and summer. These flowers were so beautiful and so unique and they're actually medicinal as well. And so, very very cool so i'm going to be sewing quite a bit of these so i'm about to fertilize our onions and this is the fertilizer i'm going to be using i'm also going to be sprinkling them with some blood meal um, for nitrogen <laughs> this is one to two tablespoons per gallon For us gardeners, there is a ton of different things to do right now. And I am going to show you a few other things that I plan to accomplish today. <laughs> so our newest addition to the garden, which is this garden bed that Thomas and I put together. He built it, he designed it, and he let me do the fun parts and help screw it in. <laughs> but I'm so happy to see it filled up y'all so there's filled dirt at the bottom and then I topped it off with some compost and so this is going to be a really 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 great growing bed because I have no filler in there um, as far as like any pine straw or sticks and things that I've done before I'm also going to um, be adding sawdust inside of this bed as well 
so it's definitely going to be so rich in nutrients so yesterday when i planted out onions i had enough space to plant all but like 24 and so i needed another small space to plant the rest i was just really trying to think about where I could plant them that would be a convenient space for them. And then I remember that I had these crates. And so I got this crate for, I think it was a dollar or two. And so I'm thinking that this crate could really work as a solution to plant onions. And so I'm gonna give it a try and plant the onions in here. This is just composted manure that I'm putting in there. On top of that, I'm adding some homemade potting mix. Next, I'm adding some blood meal for some nitrogen for the onions. And just like I did with the onions right beside the greenhouse, I am going to plant these about three inches apart. With the eight onions that I had left, I just stuck them right on the front of this bed. So I have so many of these little pots that I am going to mix up some potting soil for and then use these to plant some different varieties of flowers in there. I'm just going to be whipping up some potting mix using a little perlite and vermiculite. I have some worm castings in here and some peat moss. And so I'm just going to mix this all up and get it nice and soaked. And then I'm going to add these, add this mixture to these little pots so that I can sow seeds. So I got a tray full of these all prepped with some potting soil and ready to be planted. So we recently found a ton of treasure on the side of the road, y'all. All of this stuff that I'm showing you right now came from the same pile. So incredible, right? I absolutely love this wheelbarrow. It adds so much character to the garden. And I'm thinking this might be a good garden bed flip. What do you think? This pot is adorable. And y'all, this is the perfect garden cart. It's gonna be a garden cart, y'all. There were so many useful pots in the pile that I couldn't believe it. Once we started getting in there, I was like, man, this is so great. These are the cushions that came off of the bench as well as this very beautiful rocking chair. And yes, this vine was in the pile. This beautiful vine. So I found the perfect place for this vine. Oh my goodness, look how cute this teacup was. That is adorable. Thank you. And it had this rose inside of it. That's where you saw that little divot, but it's not dead. A miniature rose is not dead, it's still alive. So this is some compost I have here that I just wet and I'm just allowing it to drip down in there. Okay, back to the vine. Right this way, guys. I'm going to put it right over here. I dug a little hole and I put some water down in it. 
and I'm gonna plant this vine right here on this trellis. This is what the root ball is looking like. I'm just going to get that nice and wet. that in uh -oh. <laughs> just joking I am gonna water that in <laughs> but the water is off how beautiful it already wants to be so this vine is actually native in our area so it does really well and it's going to be so gorgeous over here on this trellis so as some of you know I have a ton 22 to be exact um, 22 grow bags that I need to fill up with some potting soil and so I'm going to be doing that surely maybe slowly but surely <laughs> for sure um, since I am mixing all of our potting soil up um, by hand I'm just going to break that task up into days so I may do a bucket like this every couple days to try to fill as many bags as I can this might fill my guess is that this is going to fill three or four bags but we'll see so I received a ton of um, advice from so many of you um, who have grow bag experience and one of the top things that I heard was how dry it typically is inside the grow bag. And so what I've done is made a mix and I've tried to put a ton of perlite and vermiculite in here, hoping that it will not be as dry. That's the hope. I was able to fill four bags about halfway full. I know many of you had a concern about the weight of the bag with the soil in it on the fence. And so that is something that we're just going to all have to see together. Will it hold up? Will it come crashing down? <laughs> we'll have to see. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It feels so good to get so many much needed things accomplished in the garden today. I hope that you are feeling inspired and encouraged to get all of your things started too and to get out there and see what you can do in your space. Definitely chat with me down in those comments below. I cannot wait to hear what it is that you are planning on planting that's different than you've planted ever before. Like I'm planting so many new things this year. I love to hear what you are planting as well. I will see you guys next time.